In this video, we're going to take the next step in understanding Faraday's law, which is to figure out what this minus sign means and how we can figure out the direction of current flow based on some EMF. So as a quick reminder, uh, Faraday's law says that the EMF, which acts like a voltage, uh, is equal to negative n, where n is the number of loops, d phi b dt, where phi b is the magnetic flux through the loop. So in this video, we are actually not going to calculate any EMFs. We are only going to figure out directions of currents generated by EMFs. Lenz's law tells us about the direction of what's called the induced current. So when an EMF is generated, this effective voltage, the current that is generated based on that EMF is called the induced current. Induced means that it is created by the changing magnetic field. So uh, we have an induced current. In this example, here we have some external magnetic field, which is pointing into the board and increasing, moving through our circular loop. This magnetic field pointing into the board and increasing creates an induced current because it creates an EMF since we have a changing flux, right? It so happens in this example that the induced current will flow in a counterclockwise direction. Lenz's law is what is gonna help us figure out that in this particular example, the induced current should flow in a counterclockwise example, and shortly we'll get to how we can figure that out. But for right now, I just wanna make clear what the induced current really means. It is simply the current that is created by the changing magnetic flux. So the induced current will also generate an induced magnetic field. Here we have current moving around a wire that is going to create its own magnetic field. We can use our standard current, uh, sorry, magnetic field of a loop right hand rule to figure out that if my fingers curl in the direction of the current, my thumb points in the direction of the magnetic field, that is out of the page. So in this case, we see that a magnetic field increasing into the board through this loop generates an induced current in the counterclockwise direction and an induced magnetic field pointing out of the page due to that induced current. And our goal in this video is going to be to develop a set of guidelines that we can use in order to figure out the direction of this induced current the direction of the induced magnetic field as well. Throughout this video, we are going to try to be very clear about the difference between the external magnetic field, which is generated by some external entity, say a, a solenoid uh, near the loop creating this magnetic field, and the magnetic field created by this induced current. So we will always put subscripts on our magnetic fields in this video be external for the magnetic fields externally generated, which are creating our initial flux and our change in flux, since we will have these external magnetic fields changing, and the induced magnetic field created by the induced current. Now let's list the rules for Lenz's law. Okay, so here I have two different setups, and we're gonna talk through each of these setups to the point where we know the direction of the induced current and the direction of the induced magnetic field. Okay, so step one is we determine the direction of the external magnetic field through the loop. This is generally quite simple. In this case, we have an external magnetic field pointing into the board. So that's it. That is the answer to number one. For our Second example here, we also have an external magnetic field pointing into the board. So in both of these cases, the answer to number one is that the external magnetic field is pointing into the board. There is a magnetic field inside of each of these loops. I just haven't drawn it for the clarity of the picture because we're going to end up drawing the induced magnetic field inside of the loops here. 
and we just don't want to clutter up our pictures too much. But in each of these cases, there is a uniform magnetic field generated by some external source pointing into the board everywhere, including inside of the loop. Okay, the next step is to der determine whether the flux is increasing or decreasing. In these two examples, I have simply listed that. So in this case, our external magnetic field is increasing, our area is not changing, and so our flux, magnetic field dotted with area, is clearly increasing in this picture. In this case, our external magnetic field is decreasing. It is getting smaller, so our area is not changing. Again, when the uh, magnetic field gets smaller and nothing else about the picture changes, our flux is going to decrease. So in this case, in the case of our top example, number two is that the flux is increasing. In our bottom example, the flux is decreasing. Now for the third step. We have two different options here. If the flux is increasing, then the induced magnetic field will be in the opposite direction of the external magnetic field. So in this case, our flux is increasing and our external magnetic field points into the board. So our induced magnetic field will be out of the board. So we label this as B induced. It points out of the board. It is opposing the, the increase in flux. For our bottom example, our magnetic field is decreasing if the flux is decreasing, then the induced magnetic field will be in the same direction as the external magnetic field. So here we have a induced magnetic field which will point into the board. It will be pointing in the same direction as the external magnetic field. Okay. Now we have the direction of our induced magnetic field and there's only one step left, which is to use the right hand rule in order to determine the direction of the induced current. So our induced current is gonna generate this magnetic field at its center. So we need to use the right hand rule for loops of current. And that right hand rule is that our fingers curl in the direction of the current and our thumb points in the direction of the magnetic field generated by that current. My thumb points out of the board, my fingers curl in the counterclockwise direction. So the induced current, which is generating this induced magnetic field, points in the counterclockwise direction. In this case, my induced magnetic field, which I found through step three, points into the board and my fingers curl in the clockwise direction, which means that my induced current will rotate in the clockwise direction. Now, I just like to make a few notes about these rules. One is that in following the steps here, we find the induced current after finding the direction of the induced magnetic field. Now, this is a very handy way of thinking about finding the direction of the induced current because we have these rules relating magnetic field direction. But in reality, the induced current is the thing generating the induced magnetic field. So the kind of order of operations is the external magnetic field changes, that changing external magnetic field drives a current through the loop, that current then generates the induced magnetic field. So changing external magnetic field creates induced current, creates induced magnetic field. It just so happens that in figuring out the direction of this induced current, it's actually handier to think about the induced magnetic field first, even though that's not really kind of the order of operations in terms of what creates what in this picture. Now let's do two new examples of using Lenz's law. So what's happened now is we have the same idea of a loop in a magnetic field, but we have reversed the direction of the magnetic field. In our top picture, the 
magnetic field, the external magnetic field is increasing out of the board. And in the bottom picture, our external magnetic field is decreasing out of the board. So it points out of the board, but it is becoming weaker and weaker out of the board. Okay, so we will do the top one first. First, determine the direction of the external magnetic field through the loop. Easy, that is out of the board. Determine if the flux is increasing or decreasing. Well, in this case, our magnetic field is increasing. Since the area is not changing, nor is the angle between our magnetic field and our area, our flux must be increasing. So our flux is increasing. Number three, we pick the option if flux is increasing then the induced magnetic field is in the opposite direction of the external magnetic field. So we can draw our, ex, uh, our induced magnetic field as a vector pointing into the page, opposing the increasing magnetic field out of the page. Finally, we use our right hand rule to determine the direction of the current. So the induced current needs to generate an induced magnetic field into the page. So our thumb points into the page and our fingers curl in the clockwise direction. So for this picture, our induced current flows in the clockwise direction and our induced magnetic field is into the page. Next, we can do the same thing, but with our magnetic field decreasing. So step one is the same, the direction of our, in our external magnetic field is out of the page. Our flux in this case is decreasing because the magnetic field is decreasing. Now in number three, we choose the decreasing flux option, which means that the induced magnetic field points in the same direction as the external magnetic field. So here we have a induced magnetic field pointing out of the board. And finally, we use our right hand rule to determine the direction of the induced current. Thumb points in the direction of the magnetic field at the center of the loop, and our fingers curl in the counterclockwise direction to give us an induced current flowing counterclockwise through the loop. Now let's do one final example of applying Lenz's law, where instead of changing the magnetic field, we are changing the area. So in this case, our magnetic field, our external magnetic field is constant, not changing, but our loop is expanding. Okay, let's apply our rules to this case. Well, for the top case, our external magnetic field is pointing out of the board, okay? The flux in this case, well, the area is increasing and we know that we can write our flux as the magnitude of B multiplied by the magnitude of A multiplied by the cosine of the angle between them. Well, the magnitude of B isn't changing because we said the magnetic field is constant. The loop is not rotating such that the angle between the area vector and the magnetic field would be changing. But the area of my loop is increasing as the loop expands. Therefore, the flux is increasing. Okay, so then we turn to item number three. My flux is increasing. And if the flux is increasing, the induced magnetic field will be in the opposite direction of the external magnetic field. So my external magnetic field is out of the page. I want to oppose that change. So my induced magnetic field will be into the page. My flux is increasing. My induced magnetic field opposes the direction of the external magnetic field. Next, I again use my right hand rule. My thumb points in the direction of the induced magnetic field and the induced current that generates that induced magnetic field must point in the clockwise direction. Now, I can do exactly the same thing here. 
where instead of expanding, my loop is now contracting. I can use exactly the same equation here. Again, the magnetic field is constant, but the uh, area is decreasing, which means that my flux is decreasing. When my flux is decreasing, my, X, my magnetic field that is induced points in the same direction as my external magnetic field, according to rule number three. So here is my induced magnetic field, which will point out of the board. Finally, we use our right-hand rule to say that my uh, induced current must point in the counterclockwise direction in, in order to create an induced magnetic field out of the board.